Hello and welcome fellow bookworms and film fans. Welcome to this week's episode of The Consented Narrative. We will be looking at the lovely novel, this is a book review this week, of uh, Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. So this book I couldn't put down. Like I love Horowitz, I really do, and I couldn't put it down. I literally, from the very first page to the last page, the only thing that bothered me, but it's a really, it's really, really good, is it's it's a book within a book. So essentially, you start off reading this detect like this this person's um, manuscript of this last this last detective um, that's going to read it. Um, so basically, his his the writer is called Alan Conway uh, and he's writing about the detective Atticus Pond um, and Atticus Pond is on his final mission before you know he he dies um, and you're following this story and you're getting really into it and then just as you're sort of like right there you're like oh, this is so good this is so good and then it cuts back to the real life because the real life Alex Conway has died he has been murdered um, and it's basically, you then get like this break from the story that Alex Conway has written about Atticus Pond. Um, you then get this sort of like real life murder investigation going on towards Alex Conway. And it's genius. It's absolutely genius. It's like suspenseful. Um, you know, it's got you guessing who did it. I mean, anyone that knows me, anyone that's met me, anyone that spends any time with me, knows that I love murder mysteries. I love them. I really do. I will never not love them. Um, and what gets me going with a good murder mystery is I love trying to figure out who done it. And I'm like, oh, who done it? Um, and I figured out who done it in both the novel, like the, um, you know, the, the novel that Alex Conway had written and in, uh, and in the novel that, you know, Anthony Horowitz wrote, uh, who is the death of Alex Conway. But it's so brilliantly done. It's so brilliantly written. Um, he's got a second one out, Moonflower Murders. But because I got this one in paperback, as you can see, I'm very particular with how I like my books. So because I got this one in paperback, um, I will then be getting the second one in paperback. So I've got to wait for it to be released. What I love about Horowitz is he writes so well-rounded characters. Like he doesn't just put a character in just for just for the sake of the character being there. Every character has its own sort of like way of working. And he's very good at leaving like little crumbs throughout the book. So if you're if you're aware of, you know, murder mysteries and things like that, and it is things that you have read before and followed before, it is something that by the end you're going, Oh, didn't see that one coming. Or did you? Um and he he's he writes it so well that you don't realise that you're reading a novel within a novel at first, um, which is the first time I've kind of seen this this done. But also you don't realise that you're reading these these characters, these characters feel so lifelike to you. Um, and like the, 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 the little novel uh, is actually called Magpie Murders, but it's so cute, uh, the way that they describe the little village that they're in, that it's just sort of like, that's where I wanna be when I grow older. Um, it's I want to be in this little village, you know, with like a little shop and everyone knowing everyone and, you know, a little church. Not that I go to church, but I do appreciate a good looking church. And it's just, he's so good at doing that. Um, and I've read things by him before and he's, his narrative isn't, because I find sometimes with some authors, they're trying too hard to be clever. So especially, I don't know about you, but I found with certain books when you're reading them, you are finding that they are trying too hard to try and almost trick the audience, as it were, to, to be like, aha, you thought it was this person, but it was this person all along. And that annoys me. And I feel like Anthony Horowitz, he writes quite simply, but it's so brilliantly interwoven with the characters and with the stories that by the end of it, you don't realise that you've read, you know, 300 pages. And I keep seeing memes on Facebook and on Instagram and all of that, of people being like you know you start a book and then you turn around and it's the next day because you can't put the book down and that is 100% how I felt with this book like I I picked it up I read it I mean you could hardly tell I've even read it I read it that quick that the spine didn't even I mean I hate when the spine cracks but it's just it's so brilliant and like 
I would definitely recommend this book to anyone. It's an easy read. It's nothing too complicated. It's nothing too over the top. It leaves you satisfied at the end of the book. So you don't feel like you have to go off and research what really happened. There's no ambiguous endings. What happened happened. You know why it happened. You were given a reason. It was almost like when Columbo's like, and one more question. Or when Poirot turns around and he's like, ah, I got you. Um, so it is just a case of, I just couldn't put it down. And it was so well written and, and I thought I'd be put off with the story with a story and it did at first, but then I was so intrigued by the Alex Conway murder that I almost forgotten that we'd started off with the whole Atticus Pond mystery. So then when it went jumped back to the Atticus Pond mystery, I was like, oh yeah, of course. Um, and that is what I think is the, is the marks of a good book. So it gets a four out of five for me. Um, it's definitely going to live on my shelves. I'm definitely going to be getting the next one, uh, Moonflower Murders. Um, and if anyone's, you know, anyone wants to go out and buy a nice easy book to read, this is definitely it. It will keep you entertained, but it's not an airport novel. This is a kind of curled up in the corner with a glass of hot uh, chocolate kind of book. So obviously this is my own opinion. Please, if you do read, if you do read any of the book recommendations or anything that I do give you, please let me know because I'd love to know if people are actually enjoying um, these videos that I'm putting and if it's it's pushing you to maybe read something you necessarily wouldn't. Um, as you know, I feel these film these things in advance, so I'm sure you noticed as of last week's episode and this week's episode the grown shells with my pretty pretty novels as I got a lot of books for my birthday. I'm not complaining at all. It's basically what I asked my friends for, pretty books. Um, but if there are any books that you want me to read that I necessarily maybe wouldn't have picked up on my own, please just let me know. Leave it below in the comments. Join the Facebook group, Contented Narrative, um, and join the discussion and let me know if there's ones that you think I would I would uh, rather enjoy reading. Um, obviously, I do film um, book reviews and book to film adaptations in advance. So at the moment, I'm reading Les Mis, but that probably won't air until the end of May. Um, so please just bear that in mind that if you have recommended a book or, or a book to film adaptation that it might not air till later on in the year because I like being prepared but thank you so much for watching don't forget to click subscribe um, enjoy enjoy your weekend and remember to always keep it contento